I couldn't believe what I heard when I confronted my mother-in-law who smirked. Why don't you stay there forever? Well, I was preparing to return to my hometown to give birth. I don't want any more of your freeloading visage, she said rudely, but I was able to remain composed and say, okay, take care. Then, I'm Michelle, a 32-year-old professional. I met Kevin three years ago at a party because we both enjoyed music, and we've been together ever since. After exchanging numbers, we started spending our evenings together at the neighborhood pub, discussing everything from our favorite music to work problems. Spending time with Kevin was always enjoyable and seemed to pass quickly dot. We soon formed a relationship, and I have never been happier. We enjoy spending weekends together, even if we have a busy schedule. Imagining meeting Kevin at the end of the week motivates me to work harder and produce more. Our friendship has greatly helped my career by providing encouragement and support. We moved in together after a year of dating and decided to marry Dot. We were both serious about our future living arrangements together. Let us get to know each other better and better. Understand one another's quirks and routines. After a year of living together, I am more eager than ever to marry him, and I know he is waiting for the right moment to pop the question. Then, unexpectedly, Kevin invited me to a fancy restaurant for supper, though it was not a particularly memorable occasion. I couldn't get rid of the thought that this might be it. I arrived at the restaurant after work feeling both excited and nervous. I noticed that he seemed much more nervous than I did when I first saw him. Kevin was clearly nervous, but seeing him in that state relieved my own anxiety dot. As our lunch progressed, I quietly laughed and received his earnest but stilted greeting. Kevin's anxiety became more pronounced. As we cleared our plates, he whispered my name. Michelle's straight, sincere expression unnerved me a little. Michelle, you are the most incredible person, and I will always treasure you. I hope you think the same of me. Will you marry me? He presented a ring and a variety of moving comments. My reaction was positive and instinctive. Yes, I am eager to begin our lives together. Our engagement was officially announced. I was elated. However, the happiness was short-lived as lost responsibilities took precedence. We had to schedule family gatherings, get to know each other's families, and start planning our wedding dot. It was difficult to balance everything with our demanding careers, but Kevin and I were able to make time to carry out our ideas. Kevin's warmth and genuineness won my parents over from the moment I introduced him to them. Their acceptance meant everything to me, and I was glad they supported our marriage decision. But the encounter with Kevin's parents took an unexpected turn, Dot. When Kevin's mother first met me, she spoke plainly. Kevin's fiancé, you appear to be fairly simple. I was surprised by her angry remarks. Kevin interrupted me before I could respond, adding, Mom, what are you saying? She's the woman I chose. He spoke in a combative tone. I am simply being truthful. Kevin's father intervened in an attempt to defuse the situation after his mother shot him. Susan, Enough already. That's not appropriate. I was devastated by his mother's statements, and despite Kevin and his father's efforts to console me, I couldn't get over it. Kevin later expressed regrets. Michelle, I apologize for my mother. Kevin told me she's always been honest, perhaps overly honest. Your candor astounds me. I've never been completely comfortable with it, Either dot, please try not to be affected by what she has said. Please let me know right away if she says anything inappropriate after we marry. I will see to it. He truly pledged. Even when we first met his parents, his assurance helped to alleviate my concerns. Kevin had shown a protective nature since the beginning of our relationship. However, my nervousness persisted, owing to the impending family gathering. I couldn't help but worry that Susan, Kevin's mother, would treat my parents disrespectfully. Kevin assured me that, despite my concerns, he would handle things carefully. In addition, I had warned my parents about Susan's strong personality, which they were already aware of from previous summaries. When the family gathering day finally arrived, I was nervous for a variety of reasons. Hello, I am Kevin's father, Jack said. Dot, it is nice to meet you. And he extended his hand to my parents. We are Michelle's parents. My parents kindly responded, keeping the conversation lighthearted. They said hello to Jack, but Susan remained silent, taking a seat by herself and ordering her drink without making eye contact. Give me her red wine, please. It appears that we will need a small amount of alcohol to spice things up, 
she said casually. Dot, her remark, cast an unsettling shadow over the group. My parents are standing by. Susan's blunt demeanor temporarily rendered her speechless. Jack and Kevin, clearly irritated by Susan's actions, quickly apologized for her rudeness. As the meal progressed, my parents and Jack struck up a friendly conversation. Susan, who was mostly focused on her meal, remained quiet at first, but as she drank more, she became more vocal. Dot. She began to rudely interrupt the conversations. A government job may be stable, but the pay is not particularly high. Kevin is marrying such boring people, she blurted out, becoming increasingly disruptive as the evening progressed. If they have children, they are likely to be just as dull. Susan praised harshly, clearly crossing a line with her words. That's enough, Jack said, his voice tinged with anger. Dot, you need to leave right now. Susan left reluctantly, muttering about how she was simply being honest. Jack escorted her outside and called for a cab to take her home. When he returned to the restaurant, he and Kevin apologized again for Susan's actions. I was grateful we had reserved a private room. Susan proved to be a more difficult challenge than we had anticipated, Dot. At our wedding, she was noticeably quieter, likely due to Jack's stern warning that she had to behave impeccably or face serious consequences, as he had even hinted at divorce if she embarrassed them again. Fortunately, she refrained from making any comments, and the wedding went off without a hitch. Much to my relief. As a result, Kevin and I were ecstatic to begin our marriage. Dot. We had a wonderful, blissful relationship in which we shared household responsibilities equally, ensuring that neither of us felt overburdened. Kevin was a fantastic cook, which was a welcome bonus. On days when he was late for work, he continued to serve as the chef. We cooked together, which added to our enjoyment of being a happy couple. Kevin made a concerted effort to visit his family home alone, whenever possible, Dot being mindful of Susan's and my emotions. Susan avoided making direct, snide remarks or confronting me as a result of this, and I greatly appreciated Kevin's thoughtful consideration at this time. However, tragedy struck when Jack suddenly became ill and died. Kevin and I rushed to the hospital but arrived too late. Dad! Kevin exclaimed in disbelief, his voice breaking from grief. Susan was visibly distraught after Jack's death. I'm crying out, how could you leave me like this? Despite our strained relationship, I couldn't help but feel deep sympathy for Susan's loss. At that point, I couldn't help but sympathize with Susan's deep grief. We mourned the loss of Jack, a man who had always been kind to me, dot. In the days that followed, Kevin and I became deeply involved in the funeral arrangements while dealing with our sadness. Kevin took the initiative in organizing the proceedings, and I did everything I could to help him during this difficult time. The funeral went well, and we felt we had given Jack a proper send-off. Kevin and I gradually resumed our normal routines, dot. It took some time, but we finally got used to life without Jack. Kevin appeared especially determined to move forward with a renewed sense of purpose. However, just as we were settling into our new normal, an unexpected challenge arose. Susan appeared at our doorstep unexpectedly, saying, Kevin, please, I need help. Mom, what is wrong? Kevin inquired, clearly disturbed by her uncharacteristic demeanor. Dot. Her voice softened as she replied, Since your father died, I've been feeling very lonely. Nothing seems to taste good anymore. I just wanted to see the faces of my only family, my son and his wife. Her words hit a chord. Her vulnerability was palpable. Could I stay with you for a short while? She inquired, her voice filled with desperation. Dot Kevin and I were surprised by her request. If things continue as they are, I fear I will be crushed by loneliness, she pleaded. We hesitated, but reasoned that a brief stay would not be harmful. Susan appeared fragile, and we doubted she had the energy to be hostile to me. Thus, we agreed to let her stay. Susan unexpectedly adapted well. Dot, she even started helping with household chores. Staying at your house is the least I can do. Thank you. You are lifesavers. She expressed gratitude. Kevin and I both appreciated her efforts, and life seemed more manageable, almost pleasant. However, after about five months, Susan gradually began to revert to her old habits. Michelle, are you going to quit your job? Is it not normal for wives to stop working? She casually remarked one day, 
indicating a return to her old ways. You have been working all this time, I began, but Susan's tone quickly became harsher, indicating that she was reverting to her old self. I turned to Kevin and said, Okay, we need to talk to Mom and ask her to consider moving back to her hometown. Kevin brought up the subject with Susan, and her response surprised us. Dot. I quote, V already sold the family home, she admitted. Kevin and I exchanged shocked looks. Mom, why would you do that without first discussing it with us? That is our family home. Kevin said, I inherited it from Dad. His voice was full of disbelief. Selling it was my choice. Susan defended herself, but her casual dismissal stings. You should have at least notified us, Kevin responded, his frustration evident. I forgot. Sorry, I now have nowhere else to go, so please do not kick me out, Susan pleaded. Kevin and I were left speechless. As we struggled to accept our new reality, another unexpected development occurred. I discovered that I was pregnant. Kevin and I were overjoyed. We had hoped for a child but were about to give up due to our age. It was truly wonderful news. However, the prospect of dealing with Susan during the pregnancy dampened our joy at having a growing family. Her complaints had resumed. Why do I need to cook for you? I'm only staying here because of Kevin, not you. Kevin explained that, traditionally, the wife is responsible for all housework. Susan would cook for herself and him and do her laundry, but she would stubbornly avoid any chores that involved me. Dot. Despite Kevin's reprimands, she only showed remorse briefly before resuming her old habits. At my wit's end, and in need of a break, I decided to begin my maternity leave early and return to my parents' home for some peace. When I discussed this with Kevin, he suggested a solution that we both ultimately agreed on. As we made our plans, I informed Susan of our decision and started preparing for the move. You quote, re going back home to give birth? She asked. There was a sharp edge to her voice. Yes, I believe it is the best decision for a safer childbirth, but it also means I will be stepping away from household duties for a while. Kevin supports this decision, I explained. Susan smirked in disdain when she heard this. Why don't you just stay at your parents' house forever? I don't want to see your parasitic face around here anyway. I bet Kevin has had enough of you. You don't need to return to this house anymore, she sneered. Her harsh words surprised me and made me feel relieved. Okay then, take care. I responded calmly and returned to my parents' house. They greeted me with open arms, giving me the peace and comfort I needed at this time. A month later, Kevin arrived at my parents' house with exciting news. I finally got permission from work to switch to remote work permanently, and I found us a new place to live. He announced. That's fantastic, I said thoughtfully. Kevin had rented an apartment near my Paris home, making it easier for us to begin our new lives there. Dot. He then terminated the lease on Susan's room and completed our move to the new apartment. Susan was clearly concerned about these developments and called me in a panic. Hello, Michelle. Where are you? I responded. I am at our new place with Kevin. New location? Where? Susan's voice was urgent and slightly panicked. I'll let you know in due course, but to be honest, the lease here is being canceled and everything is being moved out. I can't stay here any longer, I explained calmly, emphasizing Kevin and my new beginnings. Kevin stated that he is cutting ties with me. He no longer wants to talk to me, she inquired, her voice cracking. Yes, we are starting over somewhere else, I added, hoping to make her understand the gravity of our decision. So you were just pretending to be nice while staying here? This had always been your plan. Susan accused me of misinterpreting my intentions because you couldn't make any money by selling the house you got from Jack, correct? How did you find out? I inquired, surprised at her knowledge. You were telling the neighbors how upset you were that the house your husband had left had no value. Then it went up for sale. Dot people simply cannot keep quiet about such things. Give me Kevin back. I am the kid's parent, so I have the right to live with him. As I previously stated, he does not want to see you. And I'm all pressuring him into doing something he's not comfortable with. I replied calmly. Susan lost her cool when she heard this. Who do you believe you are? acting arrogantly when you're just a broke, freeloading, playing wife. That is not a nice thing to say, but it is true, she snapped. I replied calmly, well, I don't think our paths will cross much in the future, so it doesn't bother me. But let's be clear, I work a side job in addition to my full-time job, and I make more money than Kevin. 
I said, Oh, seriously? What is this side project? Susan asked with skepticism. Since I first learned about web design, I've been involved in various industry initiatives. I mentioned that my monthly income from both my full-time job and freelancing is approximately $10,000. How come this amount exceeds what Jack used to produce? Susan was shocked by my financial situation, Dot. She had no idea how much money the woman she had misjudged was making. However, none of this is significant to you. I made it clear that Kevin has severed relations with you, and I will be removing myself even further. Hold on. If you make that much money, maybe you could help me out? Susan spoke wistfully. I had no hesitation. I blocked her number and hung up. Knowing Susan's genuine motivations and making her feel guilty provided comfort. I felt at ease, knowing that I would never have to deal with her again. Susan had no idea what was happening in our lives anymore. She was unaware of my parents' residence or my place of work. Kevin worked from home, so we were hiding our new address, so there was little chance she would find us dot. We discovered through rumors that Jack left very little inheritance. Susan had a history of excessive spending. Her financial troubles were exacerbated by the fact that she had tried to sell the house, but received only lowball offers. Despite the difficulties, her old behaviors persisted. Kevin was called by a neighbor from our previous neighborhood, who informed him that Susan's spending habits remained unchanged, dot her over-reliance on payday loans, has caused her debt to spiral out of control. Her financial problems worsened when she attempted to borrow money from her neighbors, but was unsuccessful. It appeared that karma was finally catching up with her. Meanwhile, Kevin and I were content with our lives, free of Susan's interruptions, dot. We split our time between my parents' house and our own as we prepared for our baby's arrival. We were excited about the future. I was looking forward to raising our family and cherishing every moment we had together, with a baby on the way. Knowing the chaos that had previously engulfed us, we truly valued this newfound calm.